Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me, Lauren, from Lauren and the Books. Lauren on the floor, I should be called today, because I'm sat here on the floor next to two of my bookshelves. So what I thought I would start doing today is a, um, a sort of mini bookshelf tour. Speaking of mini, she's looking at me up here all angry. Um, <clears throat> going through, shelf by shelf, what I have on my shelves, um, a little bit more in depth with what they are, where they came from, etc. I love watching bookshelf tours, um, and I do enjoy the sort of like, this is what I've got, this is what I've got, this is what I've got, but I don't keep that many books. I um, I have quite a big turnover of books. Once I've read them, often if they're not a five or a four or a five star, and or there's not somebody I know that I want to lend that to or give that to, I take them into work and sell and or charity shops and things like that so I only keep books that I haven't read or books that I have read and are four or five star basically so all of these books here are on my TBR so I haven't read any of these and as you can see I've got them in a sort of semi um, rainbow so I wanted it to be like red on one shelf then yellow but I don't have as many books so it sort of goes from red into orange, into pink, strange, into yellow, and then a few greens on the end here. So I thought I would start with this shelf. We're gonna get a bit closer in a minute, and then I'm gonna talk you through what they are, where I got them from, and if I feel excited about them or not. Um, I will also do a sort of, a, a, at the end perhaps, um, a tour of like these sort of bits that I've got here. But obviously you can see these things here, which are gonna get in the way as I get the books out, so I'm gonna move them. This is um, a light up, I don't think it's got any batteries, light up Lauren it says here in different colours and then it's got um, stars either side. David's mum got that for me, I think it was in my um, my stocking one Christmas which is amazing. And then my friends Alex and Kate got me these Scrabble letters which were blank um, and I changed them to Lauren the books. So I need an and, I need an and. Where can I, I've, I feel like they do things like this in an and, maybe if I could get one of those I could lay things out even nicer. So that's what I've got here, I'm just going to move this out the way and then we're going to get into the books. And I've turned the lights off as if to make it even more fun. So here we are, we're going to get straight into it. So first book here I have is Sarah Pascoe, Animal. Um, this is a memoir of, of Sarah Pascoe, who is a comedian in the UK. Um, I got this from the publisher a year or so ago and was really, really keen to read it. Haven't got round to it yet. My friend Kate, um, who also bought me those uh, letters, these guys, um, her and her husband have been to see Sarah Pascoe and got signed uh, copies of this book and said that it's very, very good. So um, it's quite a sort of, I think it's a bit of a feminist manifesto. It's a funny and illuminating tour of the female body with award-winning comedian Sarah Pascoe. So looking forward to that. I need to get around to reading that soon. There's going to be a lot of that. There's going to be a lot of need to get around to reading that soon <laughs> coming up. So that's that one. The next one, I'm going to pull them out a little bit so when I finish with them, I can put them in. The next is Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops by our own lovely Jen Campbell. Um, this is a cute, very cute and very amusing um, collection of um, funny things that Jen has come into contact with over her years of working as a bookseller. Um, I really, really like this and there's just I could literally open it at any time and, um, and they're really, really funny things. So, Customer, you know that film Coraline? Bookseller, yes indeed, customer, my daughter loves it. Are they gonna make it into a book? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just full of like funny things like that. These are really great little stocking filler gifts. I've also got, spoiler alert, more weird things coming up. That's here, yellow spine. So that's that one there, I bought that for myself. Um, the next one is another one that I bought for myself and that is The Improbability of Love by Hannah Rothschild. So this was shortlisted for the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction. 2016, last year, um, and it tells a story about a painting which um, travels, uh, crosses hands, oh Minnie's being so cute, look, oh you can see her in the corner, <laughs> hello, hello, um, this it's uh, the story of a painting, I think it's told from many perspectives including that of the painting, I've heard mixed things about this, when I, when it was all being spoken about and had been shortlisted, I'd only heard good things, but since then I've heard less good things so I do want to get around to reading it I think for me this sort of like I think this is a bit of a summer holiday read so maybe if David and I get a weekend away or something this summer I might take that with me then <clears throat> the next one those two were both bought online the next one is um love Nina and I hate film and tv adaptation covers but I'd heard really good things about this series and saw this in Blackwells in Edinburgh when I went to visit Jean and I saw Brittany last year in about a year ago actually from now um, and this is so Nina Stibb who is the writer of this book and also is the 
the real person, it's, it's real life. Um, she is a 20 year old from Leicester, she's moved to London and she's working for a nanny as a very peculiar fun, uh, family. So my, sis my boyfriend's sister said to me that this series was amazing and I saw the book and I was like, oh I must read that. I mean it's set in the 80s, I do need to hurry up and read this. It's told through sort of letters and things like that, mixed media, it's just ticking all the boxes for me. However I do hate the cover, but it does have a nice red spine so that's going in there. The next is first of many of my wonderful Daphne du Maurier um, Virago modern classics. This is The Scapegoat. I'd never even heard of this. And then David and I went for dinner in Blue Water one night. It was, I believe it, we went to uh, Gourmet Burger Kitchen. And I went into Waterstones and saw this and I was like, oh, lovely. I love these Virago modern classics with the different, with the stripy spines and all of the front covers are different and just gorgeous. I don't actually know what The Scapegoat is about. So let's discover together. By chance, two men, one English, the other French, meet in a provincial ra railway station. Their resemblance is uncanny and they spend the evening talking and drinking. It is not until John wakes the next morning that he realises his French companion has stolen his identity and disappeared. So John steps into the Frenchman's shoes and faces a variety of perplexing roles as owner of a chateau, director of a failing business, head of a fractious family and master of nothing. This sounds amazing. I didn't even see what it was about. I just bought it. Um, bye, Minnie. Um, so that sounds amazing. My parents actually have a place in France and I'm um, maybe thinking about going there. And I feel like maybe I should read that. I like to match books to where you are. So I feel like maybe I'll hold on to this and if I um, if I end up going to stay with my parents in, in France I'll take this with me and read it there. Oh, I feel excited about that. The next one is another book that I bought myself and it's The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine Embalente. I've only heard good things about this. I bought this for myself for my first ever cosy reading night and I didn't end up, um, I, I think I read... Well, I can tell you how much I read. I read 38 pages. There's my bookmark in there. And I just didn't carry on with it. I, I, um, I, I carried on with other things that I'd started. So I need to go back and, um, and read this and start this again because I'm, I've no doubt that I'll love it. Du, 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 du. The next book is Perfume by Patrick Suskind. Um, this is a book that was given to me by my friend Bod, who is um, part of my um, online book club and I met through working at my cousin's cafe. Um, he lent me this and said it's amazing. Somebody else also gave me a copy of this, which I think I've put into storage. Um, and I need to read these because I've heard it's really, really good. It's about um, somebody, it's about, I, I believe, a murderer who, who murders women and makes perfume out of their bodies um it's a yeah it sounds like it's going to be great but chilling so that's that there um the next is a book i got from my mum for christmas which is the edible atlas by nina holland um this is a non-fiction book about working your way through the world and different things um different recipes and foods that they eat there um this is something oh look little christmas thing here i think this is going to be something that i dip in and out of and i think maybe i like to have a non-fiction book on the go all the time and i feel like maybe once i've finished my um girl trouble which i've got there i'm not going to lean through and get it um i might start on this because i quite like to read things like that and i think it will just be interesting the next is an Ali Smith book called Hotel World um, that I bought when I was recently in Tunbridge Wells in the Oxfam bookshop there. It was, I believe it was like £1.99 or something. Um, and this is an Ali Smith. I've only ever read one Ali Smith book and that was Autumn and I really, really loved it. So I need to get into more Ali Smith and you'll see I've got quite a bit on the old shelves. Is this short stories? No, it's a novel. It is set in a hotel and it's a captivating glimpse into the lives of five people connected to one branch of the ubiquitous global hotel chain. Brought together and forced apart by a bizarre incident involving a dumb waiter, we share their very different experiences of life in the aftermath of death, of pain and sorrow, of hope and love, and everything, in fact, the world dares to throw at us. So yeah, I love pink. I love pink covers and I love, yeah, that's a really good cover. The next one, as I said, is another Daphne du Maurier Virago modern classic. This is The King's General. Um, I can't remember where I bought this. I, I always, if I go into a bookshop and they have these Virago modern classics in there, I always allow myself to buy them um, because I just want them and I know I'm going to read them at some point. I can't remember where I got this one. Maybe in the Waterstones in London where I went with Mercedes, um, Eleanor and Caitlin. But I can't think what that Waterstones is, but I think that's where I bought this because Mercedes bought this second hand in any amount of books, which is one of my favourite bookshops. And I was very jealous. And then the next time we went bookshopping together, I bought this. So I think that was where that was. Um, this is told from a uh, male perspective, I believe. Um, and it's a sort of, you know, your classic Daphne gear. On her 18th birthday, Honor Harris meets Sir Richard Grenville. 
He is proud, reckless and utterly captivating. They have a rare connection and with her beauty and sharp wit, she intrigues him too. But days before their wedding, tragedy strikes and Honor must reconcile herself to life alone. Fifteen years later, war forces Honor to shelter with her sister at the Cornish estate of Menabilly. There she meets Richard, who has risen through the ranks to become a general in the King's army. With all of England in turmoil, Honor must draw on her her courage to to save Richard's lives and defend her country. Maybe this isn't told from a men's point of view, but yeah, really cool cover as well. The next one is a um, set of short stories called Children of the New World um, by An Alexander White Weinstein. Now, I saw this on Jen's channel and she sort of said it was a lot like Black Mirror, the Channel 4, docu uh, Channel 4 documentary, the Channel 4 series. Um, and that really piqued my interest. And I was like, oh, I must buy that. And then Caitlin from Kitty G um, was getting rid of some books. And this was one of the ones she was getting rid of. And she said, would anybody like it? And I said, yes, I would. So she posted it to me. So it's short stories and um, yeah, exciting. The next one is one who was gift gifted to me by lovely Simon. It is Anatomy of a, Sh a Soldier by Harry Parker. Now, I believe this is a um, the story of a soldier's life split into chapters, all of which are about different things that he owns or different parts of his body or something. Um, I've heard... I've, I've seen quite a lot of advertisements for this. Sorry, I'm going to get comfy. Oh, yeah. I've seen quite a lot of advertisements for this, but I've heard it's um, very interesting, and I believe my sister's boyfriend is also going to borrow it off me and read it, so... That's that one. The next is one of the only Chimamanda and Gozi Adichos, the only Chimamanda and Gozi Adichie I haven't read. It's Purple Hibiscus. Um, this is about 15-year-old Cambila, who lives in fear of her father, who's a charismatic yet violent Catholic patriarch, who, although generous and well-respected in the community, is repressive and fanatically religious at home. Um, I love Chimamanda and Gozi Adichie. She is amazing and I can't wait to read all of her stuff. So I'm almost hanging on to this a bit because I've read everything else by her and this will be the last thing. So, but yeah, I'm um, looking forward to that. Then the next one I've got is a very, very small book that I got for my, of my sister for my birthday. It is one of these penguin, uh, sorry, not penguin, a ladybird book on how it works. This is the cat. I remember the opening story. Um, the opening line was very, very funny. Or is it? A pet can be great fun. Cats are warm and fluffy like cuddly toys and their owners give them lots and tough time and affection. And just like cuddly toys, they do very little in return. Very funny. And then the next book, as I mentioned earlier, I have Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops. I also have More Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops by Jen Campbell. The next book I have is Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Tall. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Bod, who gave me uh, perfume, also gave me this. So this isn't like... I don't like this cover at all, um, at all, but I've seen an amazing cover uh, of the Cloth Bound Classics, which I've got some of here, um, where it's red with yellow hot dogs on it, and I think I am probably going to get hold of that, but yeah, this is the sort of like modern classic which I really need to um, get round to reading. Then we have yet another Daphne du Maurier uh, Mar Virago modern classic. This is House on the Strand. This is a sort of like time travelly one, a bit sci-fi um, and it is told but from a male's perspective and this is one that I need to read as well. I'm going back to, I just can't get comfy guys. The next one I've got is um, it is If You Look For Me, I Am Not There by Saruyo Srivatsa. So this is published by Blue Moose, um, who is a publisher that I discovered when um, from one of my Mothbox subscription boxes that Mercedes runs. I'll link everything down below. Um, I read a book called The Handsworth Times, which was published by Blue Moose, and loved it so much I thought, I must have a look on that publisher's um, website. And they were actually doing a deal where they did two books for ten, two paperbacks for £10. And this just caught my eye purely because of the cover and I mean look at it it's gorgeous um but this is about a um a woman who loses her um a daughter at birth and um she that that daughter is a is a twin and the, the son survives and then I think it's about that sort of family dynamic after that so that is the book I've got there now the next book is um, Teju Cole, Known and Strange Things. This was sent to me by Faber for a Christmas present. They had, had a really nice email that went around saying, oh, uh, Faber Dumb and Faber D would like to send you a uh, Christmas present. And they gave you some categories to pick from. And I picked something different. And I got this, which is Known and Strange Things by Teju Cole. And this is um, these are essays on pol politics, photography, travel, history, and literature. Um, and many of which of these have become viral sensations. And I haven't even had a chance to look at them yet. Um, but I absolutely must, so that's what I've got there. Then my sister got me this for my birthday. It is Treasure Island and the Ebb Tide by Robert Louis Stevenson. These are the Penguin English Library editions, which have the sort of similar stripy spines to the Virago modern classics. Um, they're very nice. They're floppy. I don't own any of these. This is the first one I owned. My sister and my mum, my um, 
boyfriend's mum always bought me a cloth bound classic for Christmas and birthday and Charlotte said to me I want you to collect these now so I might be getting a few more of these so they're very very pretty and very nice to look at the next book is The Proof of Love by Catherine Hall. Um, when I went to visit Simon, we filmed a video together called um, A Book Chat With. And at the end of that video, we recommend each other a book. And this is the book that Simon bought and recommended for me. And he's quoted on the back saying that this is an exceptional novel. It's a sub very subtly clever book. Rare and wonderful. I loved it. 10 out of 10. Well, that's enough for me if Simon's going to say that. And the last book I've got here is sent to me from um, the Picador, the publisher. This is Helen Oyeyemi, What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours. And it is a um, collection of short stories by Helen Oyeyemi. And I mean, look at that. Gorgeous. So that is my... I've also got here... A, you can't really see it very well, a bookend that says books I haven't read, which when I get any more red yellow, that's going to turn sideways so you won't even be able to see it. But I like it there just on show. So that is my first shelf of um, books. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't a bit too wordy and blurby for you. Um, I'll eventually get onto the rest of the shelves, but that was the first one for the time being. And I hope you really enjoyed it. And I was, I'm going to come here centrally. And I'll see you all again soon for another booktube video.